This is Joseph Coco. I'm at APE 2014 on behalf of Becky Holborn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking, Nata Soup. If you could introduce yourself, please. Hello, I'm Bonnie of uh, Bonnie Comics. All right. And uh, my, main, my main thing right now is about from Iceland, which is a, uh, a comic travelogue about a trip I took to Iceland a couple of years ago. Okay. And uh, what's been your experiences with um, trading in Autobow comic? Well, it's um, it's a lot easier for me to write about things that have already happened to me than to try and make up stories um, out of nothing. So I've sort of always just been telling long-winded stories about my life to people, and it wasn't until a few years ago that I realized, oh hey, I like drawing, and I like telling stories, and I like comics. I could maybe make comics by drawing and telling my stories as comics. So uh, that's, yeah, it's kind of uh, a turned into a whole thing. Okay. Um, in my experiences, a lot of autobio comics have tended to go the like indie bound sort of route. Um, what went into the decision of, of making like a, a sort of? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was perfect bound. Are are you? Um, are you printing it yourself? No, these were um, printed uh, with a printer called Kenneth. I think they're in Pennsylvania. Um, okay. So these are. Uh, um, edition printing. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. It's sort of a print, print on like demand. Print on demand because I'm actually working with a printer, but um, it's uh, fairly affordable for you know, like I, I printed a hundred of each of these, um, you know, to start. Uh, so I'm sorry. I think I forgot the question already. Oh, I was just asking um, what went into your decision to do like a print on demand sort of service instead of going the, the indie bound route, which um, seems to. Uh, about your experiences at APE? Have you been to this uh, convention before? This is my first time at APE. Um, I'm a little slow today. Okay. Uh, there's still tomorrow. This is day one of the two days. Um, it's been okay. Uh, I've tabled at Mocha Fest for a number of years, yep. uh, which was great, and this is the first year I've been expanding to other conventions, which uh, started with uh, my first time at TCAF this year, which was really great. Yeah. Um, very successful convention. So uh, you're going all over the place, I'm huh? I'm going all over the place, yeah. So there was TCAP, and then I was at uh, San Francisco Zine Fest last month, and um, at eight right now, I'll be at um, Jet City Comic Show in Tacoma after I moved to Seattle uh, in early November, and I'll be at Emerald City Comic Con in March, and uh, any, any place else that accepts my application. And Emerald City is in Portland, Oregon, right? Okay, I'm sorry. City Camp Comic Con is in Portland. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think it just happened actually. Yeah. Um, so, what's, uh, why are you trying to diversify so much? Are you just following the conventions where, where you think your, your fans are, or? I'm trying to find new fans. Okay, I got you. Uh, Finding your niche in the yeah, well, comic book I world? Yeah, it's really mostly a marketing thing. Um, yeah. I finally have a day job that has a kind of salary that allows me to go to conventions. Okay. And not to, not worry too much about breaking even. Profit. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to like get out to as many places as I can now so that uh, more people can find my stuff and you know maybe like it. Okay, sounds good. Um, and how would you compare some of the West Coast conventions like Ape and uh, the Zine Fest you mentioned uh, to some of the East Coast conventions like Mocha Fest and maybe uh, SPX? Um, I've found them to 
be, and this is based on very limited uh, experience of just um, half of one convention and uh, all of one other one. Which I think, I might be mistaken, but I think SF Zine Fest was actually sort of on hiatus for a few years, and this might be the first year it came back. So that's also sort of maybe not reflecting it in today's best light. But in my experience, there, there's not as much foot traffic. There is not as much people like slowing down and actually looking at things or picking stuff up. It's kind of a drag for me as a creator. Um, You're not getting the walk-ins that you would get at Mocha Fest for sure. Yeah, at, at, at a place like Mocha Fest or TCAP, people seemed at least a lot more interested in the kind of stuff that I yep. seemed. Um, Along with that, I mean, it, like for example, uh, at TCAP I sold a lot of dress and. Um, Especially if they're just digital prints. Yes, absolutely. So I did not sell a single print at SFC Fest. Um, I think I sold one today. Okay. Whereas at, um, at TCAP, I made like maybe half of my virtual, you know, sales Profits. Yeah. from So, yeah. This, you know, um, I don't know, West Coast is more laid back. People aren't really so ravenous, I guess, <laughs> which can, can kind of take a toll on your business if you're not already well known. Of course, if you've already got a name for yourself, people are just going to seek you out. But I'm not there yet. So yeah. I'm just kind of like, hey, hey guys. So you wouldn't necessarily recommend someone travel a long distance to come to Ape if, oh, if they don't have a name for themselves? No. Recommend okay. against. Okay. Two thumbs down <laughs> for like traveling without a name if you can't afford it. Stay local, if, if you can. So, uh, you've talked about traveling to a couple of places with me. What made you decide to uh, do uh, Autobio Comic on your trip to Iceland? Is, well, was it a particular event that happened there, or you felt like people were just interested in Iceland? I mean, I, I'd already started working on Autobio Comics by that time, but they were pretty much just like one-off sort of gag trips and stuff. Yeah. I hadn't started working on any sort of long-term, like, large-scale project yet. And uh, I knew I wanted to make a comic about the trip when I was going there, but I was like, well, maybe I'll make a comic or two about this, it should be fun. And then afterwards, there was just so much awesome stuff that I did that it turned into like a year and a half long project that is now pretty much, I mean, finished, so it's in these three volumes, and that's the whole story. But hopefully, uh, hopefully, hopefully, early next year, I will do a Kickstarter for a, a single volume of the whole thing, all three together, and then additional new content about the second trip I took a year later. Um, hopefully that actually <laughs> happens. Uh, but, um, are, yeah, so are, the people, are the people who are interested in the comic uh, interested in traveling, or they just uh, want to hear about you and your experiences? Thing that grabs people is like, oh, it's an exotic location. It's Iceland. That's interesting. What's that about? Um, yep. I've heard rumors about that place existing. Um, you know, and I think that's York says there are dragons there. Totally true. <laughs> that's definitely true. Hundred percent. Um, so I think that's what kind of pulls people in. But then, so my the way I, I have drawn this particular thing is um, it's about my personal experience day to day, but it's. It's what I do, but it's also what I'm feeling, and it's also what I'm eating. And so there's kind of a lot of different sensory experiences going on, and yeah. I, I feel like people enjoy that. Um, and I guess people like the art. So, you know, I guess there's something there for, for a lot of people. Okay. And uh, you were mentioning the, the San Francisco Zine Fest. Um, what uh, brought that to your attention? I realize Ape is, is quite a large show. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the San Francisco Zine Fest. What made you decide to give that a try? I don't actually remember how I found out about it, but as I was preparing for kind of a, a year of, uh, of, of a lot of cons, that's actually a comic by uh, one of my best friends, Lucy Nisley. Uh, this was a collaboration we did of work based on work by Edward Beer. Okay. Uh, so that's why it has a lot of things in it. Yeah. Um, but, so I was talking to a lot of people, um, getting recommendations for shows to go to, and that ended up on my list, and I ended up going. So I don't actually remember how I found out about it. It might have even just been like from Googling for like indie comic shows. I'm not really sure. 
Okay. And how do you vet a convention before you go to it? Like, do you just talk to friends about it? Uh, or, I try to find out from people who've gone what it's like, and I try and see if I know anyone I can stay with. Yeah. And I look into what's going on in my life around that time, and then I, you know, if it's if it's seeming like a good idea, I'll look into how much the flight might cost and see if that's actually going to be affordable. Yeah. Um, so you are flying uh, to all these places. You're not driving twenty some odd hours. To... No, as a New Yorker, I do not own a car, uh, so not really an option. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, well, would you have any advice? Well, actually, first, um, could you tell us where we could find your work online? You mentioned uh, you're hoping to do a Kickstarter with uh, uh, Icelandic volume composed into one volume in the future. Yeah, hopefully. Um, if I do that, if that really happens, that'll be probably early next year. Okay. Um, so you can see my stuff at LonnieComics.com. Okay. And it's, uh, you know, sort of, it's based on um, a, a WordPress plugin or template called Comic Press. A lot of what comics are built on it. So, sure. you know, it's not um, a Tumblr, but it, it's a blog yeah. where I and post comics. We can, um, we can read it online there? Yes, you can. You can read all of my comics there. And also purchase it online? You totally can. Yes, there are links there. Um, actually, all three volumes of Comixology, of Comixology, all three volumes of Thoughts from Iceland is available on Comixology if you want to go the digital route. And I, as a publisher, have uh, enabled the DRM free PDF download feature. So if you want to do that, you can get a backup for free, essentially. Um, and there's a little bit of extra content in the printed books and the digital books that are not on my website um, okay. as an incentive to give me your money. Definitely. And then I also have an Etsy where you can buy physical um, copies of the books and art prints and, you know, other stuff like that. So right. And like my minis, or, you know, some of those are on Etsy. Okay. And are there any projects uh, you're going to be releasing in the near future that we should be looking forward to? Uh, well, besides hopefully this um, compilation of the Thoughts from Iceland thing, um, what I've been working on lately is uh, there's this YouTube channel called uh, The Art Assignment, and basically in each episode uh, they talk to a contemporary artist, and you learn some art historical context or concept, uh, and so at the end of each episode you get an art assignment to do. And, <laughs> and so uh, I've done a couple of them so far, and I've been making comics um, about my experiences uh, doing these art assignments. Um, and so I've done two so far, uh, and those are on my, my website as well. And I hope to do more of them, but right now I'm focusing on getting stuff together for that potential Kickstarter. Um, and uh, I have a, a comic in the works that's probably going to be 20-ish pages about learning languages. Um, I speak conversational Japanese, which I studied in college, and then I lived there for a little over a year teaching English. Um, and after my first trip to Iceland, I took uh, about a year of uh, Icelandic classes. So wow. I have a few anecdotes about those sorts of things and um, some opinions. And so uh, I've, I've pretty much got that that story, that comic sketched out and scripted. But no release date at I, the moment. No release date at the moment. I actually have to like finish thumbnailing it all and then actually like draw the whole thing and whatever. So I don't yeah. know when I'm going to be able to get to that since I'm working on all this other so stuff. many projects. But yeah, there's always something. Um, awesome. But, you know, maybe I'll win the lottery and quit my day job. We'll see. <laughs> That's the dream. I guess I would have to start playing the lottery to do that. Um, so, can you uh, do you have any advice to someone who is considering attending Ape for the first time? Um, Other than have a name for yourself before you come here. <laughs> for, uh, tabling at Ape, I should yeah, say. Yeah. Um, well, the good, the, the pro is that it's a very wide open space, and so it's very comfortable. A lot of conventions, like you're, you're, you're pretty much back to against right, people in like the back. back to back with the people behind you. Yeah. Um, or like the the aisles will get really really clogged with people. That doesn't really happen. I've noticed at eight because the aisles are so wide and there's a lot of room, and that's really nice. Um, but I will say that the uh, this center, this place, this uh, festival pavilion where it takes place is way out of the way. Like like wherever you stay, you're probably going to have a pretty long commute. So if yeah. you're going with anyone with a car, or if you know how to drive, you might want to rent a car. Um, I did not, so it was quite a trek to get here today, and it will be quite a trek to get back to my friend's place in Berkeley tonight, and, and it will be quite a trek to come back tomorrow morning. You were, you were hauling all of your um, comics that entire way? I was. And oh, I wow. So um, that's, I think, probably the most important thing to know if you haven't been here before. 
have some form of transportation way planned. Way. Yeah. yeah. Um, there will be trains and buses involved and walking and walking. And the buses can be scary at night. <laughs> okay, well, I appreciate it. I hope you have a good day. Yeah, thanks.